Okay, so at this point I've reattached the circuit board back into the synthesizer. You can see I've screwed all the screws back in. I've reconnected the cables that we took out when we unplugged it originally. I kind of stuck the stuff back on the black goop there. I got a little bit on the ribbon cable there when I was putting the screen back on, but you know that stuff kind of gets all over the place so you just got to be as careful with it as you can I didn't get too much on myself or anything so that's not too big of a deal but uh, at this point you know you have pretty much done all the hard stuff so that's a good thing all we really have to do now is obviously we're going to want to take our cloth off here we don't want to close the thing with that on there and we're going to want to screw this thing back together but before you screw it completely back together I'm going to recommend that you test it obviously to make sure that it works which I'm going to do here in a minute when I put it back up on the desk so I'm going to go ahead and close this up you can see how it all looks here again at the end and uh... All we got left to do is test her out, see if the screen works, and then uh, plug it up and see how she sounds. And uh, we'll be done. Okay, so I've got the OB12 all screwed back together. And I got it up here on my desk ready to test out. I haven't put the fader caps or knob caps back on yet, just in case. Um, but pretty much everything else is put back together. I went ahead and put all the screws back in the bottom of it. Took a few minutes, but uh, that's all done. So at this point, we really only have a few things left to do, mainly testing the screen and then testing the synth itself. So we're going to go ahead and turn the screen on, turn the keyboard on, and see what happens. go. So as you can see I've now got a brand new screen crystal display from FutureLec installed on my OB12 and there's no question that that looks a million times better than how it looked only a short while ago. Now if when you first turn yours on you notice that it's not quite as bright as this don't worry, um, you probably need to adjust the contrast and that can easily be done by going to your system menu and then scrolling over to global setup and then going to display and then you're just going to want to come over here go down to contrast and you're going to want to adjust that to one I mean if you want it on something else you can but uh one gives you the best picture so that's how I have it set. Once you do that you're going to want to write that um, that way when you turn the synth on again in the future you don't have to reset the contrast every time. So uh, once you do that you're safe to turn the synth off and put your caps back on it and get it back in place so we can see how she sounds to make sure that it still works completely. It looks like it will, but it's always good to test it out. So I'm going to get that set back up and we'll give it a quick spin and then we'll be done. Okay, so I've got my OB12 all wired back up. I've got all the knobs, all the faders capped back on. And it's pretty much at this point complete. The only thing left to do is test it out and make sure that it still sounds cool and still works correctly. So that's what we're going to do. So I'm going to flip it on. Boom, there's my quality display now. You can see. So we'll go ahead and switch it back to the patch we used at the beginning. And Right out.
So there you go. It's still sounding good. It's working. The screen looks beautiful, which is just the way I want it. Now I can actually get down to some business working with this thing again without having to shine a light directly on it. And, uh, you know, just having a good screen that's brand new should buy me many more years of enjoyment with this synth. And, you know, I hope that this video helps you guys out there if you have any problems with your sense as well like I did uh, you know it's really not that bad of a job you know it probably would take you about an hour and a half to two hours to do the entire thing uh, if you haven't done it before um, but that's really not that bad and it's a heck of a lot cheaper doing it yourself than paying some synth shop to do it for you so I would recommend you know, doing it yourself if you feel up to it. And uh, so that's it, man. If you guys have any questions or want to know any other information about the synth, feel free to post on this video and, you know, I'll do my best to answer any questions I can. But uh, that's the end of the video, and I hope you guys enjoyed it, and I hope you learned something. And... I hope that you are able to fix your Overheim OB12 as well. Thanks for watching.